Dear learners, in this session, I am going to discuss most important questions from module 4. We are discussing the subject introduction to electrical engineering. It's applicable for all first year students of uh, VTU. So as you can observe, module 4 comprises of two components. First one is uh, transformers, another one is uh, three-phase induction motor. Before the beginning of the video, I request everybody to like this video if it is fruitful. Moving on to the discussion, I'm going to discuss the important question from three-phase induction motor. So the first probable question you can expect in your forthcoming examination is, explain the concept of rotating magnetic field of three-phase induction motor, or else with a neat diagram, explain the working principle of three-phase induction motor. These are the probable questions. How will you answer? First of all, you have to look at the marks. If the marks is more uh, like 10 marks, you need to have a derivation. So I let you know how to answer this. So please observe the screen carefully. First of all, you need to draw the schematic diagram of three-phase induction motor. You may use for either star connection or delta connection. In this diagram, you can see the delta connected three-phase induction motor. Winding of stator is connected in delta fashion. No worries, either you can go for star or delta. First of all, you can explain the brief working of three-phase induction motor. Obviously, it works based on the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction motor. Three-phase induction motor is also known as a rotating transformer. So we can see, first of all, you can mention about uh, the flux which is coming towards the R component, Y component, and B component, okay? And there is a phase shift. You already studied about balance system as well as unbalanced system in the three-phase system, in the three-phase circuits. Uh, so total resultant flux can be written as vector sum of phi R plus vector sum of phi Y plus vector sum of phi B. So let us consider at least uh, if theta is equal to zero, okay? Then the, the R component will be zero only. So remaining components you have to consider. Phi R and phi, y, phi B can be calculated separately in this fashion. Therefore, resultant uh, flux can be computed using the parallelogram law of vector addition, which you already studied in your plus two classes. So you can apply the parallelogram law of vector addition. So this is actually the vector diagram. So based on that, you can apply the parallelogram law of vector addition. Ultimately, the resultant flux is equal to 1.5 into maximum flux. So this is your uh, derivation for rotating magnetic field. Fine. So this much of flux is going to generate and that will be interacting with the rotor. As, as soon as it is interacted with the rotor, the flux changes takes place and results and production of induced EMF. That induced EMF will be held responsible for uh, rotating. Okay. That means uh, if the circuit is close to the current starts flowing through the circuit and the uh, rotor part is trying to have a force and it is going to operate. This is the basic working of three-phase induction mode. Most unavoidable question. What is slip of an induction motor? Explain why slip never be zero in induction motor. So how will you answer? So you can refer the slip is the difference between synchronous speed and the rotor speed. Slip you can use the formula S is equal to Ns minus N divided by Ns. Suppose if N is equal to zero, we can say slip is equal to one. Uh, so usually slip varies between zero and one, zero between zero and one in induction motor. Fine. Why slip is never be zero? Because if the slip is equal to zero, synchronous speed, synchronous speed will be equal to rotor speed. So that never be happened. If such uh, cases, induction motor never moves. Fine. Never operate, never works. Uh, why does induction motor need a starter? To reduce the starting current, explain the construction of star delta starter. You can explain the construction of star delta starter. Then what is mean by slip of an induction motor? Under what circumstances slip, uh, slip is unity and zero? That we already discussed. Uh, define slip, derive an expression for frequency of rotor current. Th this is very, very important. I will let you know how to answer this. So actually, this is the expression. That means the F dash. You need to reach F dash is equal to S into F. Okay. I have already made the video of induction motor. You can refer once. F dash is equal to S into F. Where F dash is the frequency of rotor current. S is the slip and F is the supply frequency. Hope it is clear to everybody. So these are the numerical examples. Definitely you can expect this kind of numerical example. So I will be showing you a few one or two examples. You have to remember the formula of slip. And you need to remember what, do, what is the meaning of frequency of rotor current. Just now we have derived. So all the problems are similar only. I will show you a few examples. Kindly go through that. So I request you to go through these problems. Uh, starting from simple level to somewhat moderate level. Uh, uh, the first level won't be asked in the examination because you people are belong to first year. 
So definitely you can explain moderate level questions. Okay, go through that. Please go through the uh, problem. Here you need to remember only two equations. From the two equations, obviously you can uh, compute uh, three equations. What, what are the first? What is the first equation? N s equal to one twenty f by p. Slip is equal to N s minus n by N s. Third one is f dash is equal to s into f or s is equal to f dash by f. These are the three equations. If you know the three equations, then everything will be in your hand only. You can manage it effectively. Okay, hope you will manage it. And this question also I have seen so many question paper from the so many question paper. Kindly pause the video and work on this. You can expect this kind of question in the forthcoming examination. It's very sure. Moving further. So now you can explain another type of questions like uh, a three-phase induction motor can never run at NS because there should be a difference between rotor speed and synchronous speed. Okay, uh, then another important problem then you can explain like to define slip slip speed and slip okay what is slip speed slip slip speed is nothing but uh, the difference between synchronous speed and the rotor speed that is called the slip speed hope you are understanding now i would like to explain the important question from transformer explain the construction and the working principle of transformer with a neat sketch you will be getting 10 marks okay so how will you answer this you need to explain about what is a transformer. Then uh, you have to explain the working principle of transformer by drawing this diagram. So you have to mention about the transformer core, then uh, two transformer winding, which, which is known as primary and secondary winding, how the uh, voltage step up and step down that is happening in the transformer, you have to explain. Ultimately, you need to uh, form the equations, Okay, applying the Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. Uh, so try to write this equation also. E2 by E1 is equal to N2 by N1 is equal to K, where K is known as transformation ratio. If uh, K is greater than zero, then the transformer is known as step-up transformer. If the K is less than one, then it is known as uh, step-down transformer. K greater than one and K less than one. If K is equal to one means it's an ideal transformer. That never be existing. All right. These are the things uh, which you have to explain. Okay. Explain with the help of these equations. Then construction. Let us see the construction. There are two types of uh, transformer. One is core type transformer. Other one is called a shell type transformer. Before that, you have to explain uh, transformer core and winding are the two important parts of transformer. Core is mainly used for the transfer of the flux from primary side to secondary side and the winding where we are going to provide the supply. And uh, you need to explain about uh, different type of construction. Transformer core is made up of silicon steel. Transformer winding which is made up of with the copper. So you have to explain about the losses in brief. Later, you have to explain the construction. Two type of transformer. One is core type transformer. Other one is called a shell type transformer. First of all, you need to draw the diagram of core type transformer. Thereafter, you can draw the diagram of shell type transformer. It is always advisable to prepare a table so that you can bifurcate core type transformer and the shell type transformer separately. In this fashion, you can explain. So I request everybody to note down these points because it is very important for, uh, for your exam point of view. So def definitely they, will, they are going to ask what are the constructions. These are the points you are supposed to include in your answer book so that you can get complete score, full score. Another one is explain the principle of operation of single phase transformer and derive EMF equation. So EMF equation of transformer need to be derived. So as you can observe, you have to derive the EMF equation of transformer. So anyway, flux, flux will be, we are assuming that the flux generation that is in the form of sinusoidal fashion. So phi is equal to phi m sin omega t. Now you have to apply the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Uh, now follow the same procedure. Ultimately, you will be getting like uh, uh, em is equal to n omega phi m. Okay. Now uh, you have to re replace omega means 2 pi m, 2 into pi into f. So same thing you can uh, mention. So however, we have to convert everything into RMS value. You already know that RMS is equal to em by root 2. Okay, we already studied. So based upon this uh, formula, you can simplify it. So ERMS equal to EM by root 2. So thereafter, you have to simplify it. So 2 pi by root 2 means 4.44 F phi, phi M into N. So that is ERMS. Hope it, till, till here, I think it's clear to everybody. Later, what you can do is E1 is equal to 4.44 F phi M N1. E2 is equal to 4. F uh, phi m into n2. So you can take the ratio also e2 by e1, then you will be getting n2 by n1. I think it's clear to everybody. Frequent, frequency remains unchanged because frequency never be changing. Transformer is a device which used to step up or step down the voltage or current. 
uh, without changing the frequency. That is why frequency remains constant. Hope it is clear to everybody. You have to manage it. Another one is actually you have to derive the condition for maximum efficiency of transformer. Okay, how to derive? Anyway, efficiency, you know that output power by input power, you have to modify the equation. So output power can be written as input power minus losses. There, there are two types of losses, copper loss and core loss. You have to mention like this. So PI and WCU, WI, like this, you have to mention the equation. Now you have to elaborate copper loss and iron loss in this fashion. Uh, now PI means V1, I1, cos phi1. Uh, WCU means copper loss I1 square R01 minus uh, you remove in the bracket, you will be getting uh, minus WI. So later on, you can split up the terms, then you will be getting the general equation of efficiency. But you need to, but you have to require, you need to require the what is the condition for maximum efficiency. Here you have to apply the principle of maxima or minima, which you studied in your mathematics calculus. So while applying the different uh, differentiation, you are differentiating uh, the eta. Eta means efficiency with respect to input current, I1. So that you are supposed to equate to zero because of uh, principle of maxima or minima theory. So after differentiating, you will be getting the expression like this. Later on, you have to segregate the equ equation by rearranging I1 square is equal uh, into R01 is equal to WI. Ultimately, I1 square R01 is nothing but copper loss. WI mean, uh, WI is nothing but iron loss. Copper loss will be equal to iron loss. Uh, if you want, you can write uh, max, uh, the general equation also. Uh, the, uh, the fraction fraction can be computed as square root of WI by WCU. This will be helpful for solving the numerical example. Ultimately, the efficiency of transformer at the any fraction of the load can be written as xkva cos phi by xkva cos phi plus wi plus x square wcu. This is the equation. Okay, condition for maximum efficiency. Hope the derivation is very clear to everybody. So this is most important derivation. You can expect the numerical example as well. I will be showing you the numerical example in the forthcoming slide. So now, uh, numerical example, this is based on the equation of transformation ratio, n2 by n1 is equal to e2 by e1 is equal to i1 by i2 is equal to k. So, uh, the, one more thing, uh, the flux, uh, the core area is given, okay, then uh, flux density is also given. Use the equation, b is equal to phi by a. From this, you can calculate the flux, flux you can calculate. So, this flux will be helped, it is required, okay, it is required for your uh, calculation. Do remember that. So this is another type of question. Uh, say, same equation can be applied. So what are the equation? E2 by E1 is equal to, okay. Then N2 by N1 equal to I1 by I2. This equation can be used and you can easily find out. First of all, given write the given data, substitute accordingly. Similarly, another another type of another type of numerical example, condition for maximum efficiency. I have already shown you uh, the equation. Okay, let me show you once again. For this problem, you need to use this particular equation. Okay. So KVA. KVA you have to note down. KVA means uh, apparent power. Cos phi power factor exceeds the fraction of load. WI, iron loss. WCU means copper loss. So these are the things you have to remember. Okay, by, by substitution. You will be able to get the answer. Okay. So question number eight is also in the same fashion. Unity power factor is nothing but cos phi is equal to one. That point you have to remember. Okay, if you require, definitely I will do this problem. I'll make a separate video because this video become too lengthy. Uh, similarly, another type of question uh, that is you, you need to know the uh, efficiency and the power factor. That means uh, uh, if it is full load means x is equal to one. If it is half load, x is equal to 0. 0.5. Here you need to calculate uh, x. How to calculate x? There is a formula. I already shown you. X is nothing but square root of WI upon WCU. WI is nothing but iron loss. WCU is nothing but copper loss. Try to work out. In case any queries, please uh, put up a comment. I am happy to answer back. Question number 10. Uh, use the formula. Okay. Like uh, EM of equation. Uh, then uh, transform equation for transformation ratio. Uh, the flux density is equal to flux upon unit area. This concept, if you know that you will be, you will be able to calculate uh, the uh, calculation of flux, uh, flux density, B max, you can calculate, EMF, you can compute. And uh, okay. Then another one is actually condition for maximum efficiency. Okay. This is also a very easy question only. If you know the formula, then definitely you can uh, solve that particular equation. Now, uh, these are the important textbooks. I request you to go through this textbook. 
okay let me know if you have any queries if i want to make a separate videos on the problem kindly comment definitely i will do that thank you for watching this video happy learning